This is not London. And this is not Paris. And this is not Venice either. This is Macau. And these are hotels that are replicating European cities, sometimes very accurately, and sometimes, well, not so much. Welcome to the Londoner. We are going to try everything we can here, including dining in the Eiffel Tower. So I'm Mike. Welcome to Downey Live. Let me show you around because uh, frankly, I haven't decided if I love it or hate it yet. As we arrive in Macau, the hotel has sent someone to pick us up. Hello. Hey, how are you? Yes, good. Single. How are you? Good. Welcome to Macau. Thank you. So oh, great car. Wow, look at that lightning. Wow, that is incredible service. And yes, that is an iconic London black cat. I, I don't mind a little rain. Oh, okay, okay. Thank, you thank you very much. I don't know if I've ever been in a London black cab before either. I mean, there is a little bit of traffic out here, but just like London, am I right? <laughs> and it is taking us straight to our first hotel, clearly the Londoner. Now I have accidentally booked us a suite at the hotel, which means we are greeted at the door and handed cool towels. Hello. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. Hi. First time in Macau? Yes, it is. So coming from Hong Kong, right? Yes, yeah, we live in Hong Kong now. Wow. And since we're staying in a suite, they're taking us straight past reception to our room for a private and intimate check-in experience. Just to our wings are. The wings are still. Wow. Thank you. This is the Windsor Suite. Of course, it's named after the royal family. There is a mini bar in here where everything is complimentary. Of course, you've already paid for it, but it is included. Uh, nice, nice touch. Nicole, yeah. look at the piece of art on the table. <laughs> this. I told you the other day this was my one of my favorite photos of us. You, you said this is your favorite photo of us, and I did not send this to them. They found it on our Instagram? It's like from way back? Yeah. How did they even know you were coming with me? How did they know we hadn't broken up in a horrible <laughs> fashion? We'll put the photo side by side here with the original. That's amazing. I look pretty good. I mean, they did us well. They got your crooked jaw perfect. Yeah, they did us well. <laughs> yeah. They left us with a little telephone box of treats inside, which is nice. Of course, a plate of fresh fruit and a card. These people know how to do guest relations. This bathroom is gotta be double the size of our bedroom. Yeah. And I say that about a lot of hotel bathrooms, which makes me feel very privileged, but this one is oh. extra, it has two entrances. Yeah. And this is the toilet. The second toilet. Can you show me the That's shower? That's the second toilet. Can you show me the shower? Wow. Oh my God. It's, oh, look at that shower head. It's a full steam room. It's huge. I've seen hotel steam rooms and saunas be smaller than this. I've seen hotel washrooms, entire washrooms be smaller than this. This is bigger than our entire washroom. Yeah. And this is a TV. Oh, if you had a Formula One game, you could have a beer in a, in a bath. Oh my goodness. Should we get one of these? We can't afford any of this. This suite comes with a few other benefits. Of course, there's a British Bulldog and uh, we do get to keep them. I should take my shoes off. <laughs> Pull this out. Look at this, you get to put your arm, your, my forearms get massaged. Oh my goodness. Can you turn it on? No. Is it going? No, it's not going. I'm, not, I'm just pretending you're for now. Si you're simulating it. Yeah, I don't deserve it. The other feature that I haven't ever seen before that is not actually really seen in the room, but is maybe the best touch. You get a pillow menu. They've given us two soft, two hard pillows at the moment, but inside I can choose from a neck contour pillow, memory pillow, buckwheat pillow, lavender pillow, or anti-allergenic pillow. So. I like mine full of allergenics. Okay, but let's go see what else comes with the room. What what have you asked of me since I started my YouTube channel? This room is stupid. All the videos I normally do is like sleeping on a Navy ship, 
five days in a road train, riding trains in economy class, scooter trips. Nicole's been begging me for some luxury. And now you got it. What comes with the suite is something called the residence. And right now it's happy hour. Oh. Wow. It's like being in the Kingsman. It's also connecting to uh, Ah, I see. So many secret doors. Ah, thank you. Awesome. Now this lounge is only available guests to staying in the suites. It is the Winston Churchill Lounge and it feels exactly like the type of place I imagine him drinking and eating in. And during happy hour, which it is right now, it is free drinks and free food. The power of full run. Yes. And the power of full run. <laughs> what is the garnish? Is it a bubble? Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Wow. Ooh. Very cool. Yeah. I will try again to do the bubble hole holding in the glass. Wow. Oh, you're good. <laughs> All right, cheers. <laughs> Don't pop my bubble. <laughs> we are not used to this. We feel out of our element. But fake it till you make it, right? Can we always stay here? No. <laughs> Honestly, we aren't actually that hungry, but they insist on continuing to bring us food. And some of this is stuff I've never even tried before. And of course, there's pecking duck with caviar and gold flakes. I mean, that's pretty nice. Okay, I get it. These are, this is like stuff I would never order, but it's just coming to the table. I want to point out, we didn't order anything. We ordered the drinks. We, the food just keeps coming. We now have lobster burgers and Australian Wagyu beef. <laughs> this is happy hour. This is all included in our room. And this is just the beginning. And when I mean the food kept coming, I mean it kept coming. Oh, that's That's enough. more than enough. That's yeah, good. Three that's is good. good. Oh, perfect, thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. When does that stop? Oh, that's it. <laughs> and to end all of this, because we're at the Londoner, of mm. course, they brought us a cup of tea. Actually, they brought us two. We got two, two flavors. Ginger whatever and chamomile. Ginger lemon, chamomile. I like ginger whatever better. Mm. Out these doors. Oh. Oh, wow. This is our private terrace under Big Ben. Big Ben doesn't have this. <laughs> I just have the rain. Take that, London. Yeah. It is, yeah, it is raining at the moment, which is so London. So London to, of Macau right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, the, the details are so fun. This is great. Now that we have happy hour out of the way, it's time for the changing of the guards. Um, I'm not kidding. They have really done everything they can to mimic London. And I wanted to hate it, and I kind of love it. So it happens in the Crystal Palace. Every night at 7.30 and 9.30 p.m., down in the Crystal Palace lobby has the changing of the guards. As you can see, it's more of an artistic representation rather than an exact replica of the Buckingham Palace tradition. And now, the changing of the guard. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a very 
fun interpretation and still free entertainment, and it definitely drew a large crowd. But honestly, I think it kind of accurately sums up what these European hotels in Macau represent. It's a fun twist on the iconic tradition. show and then like that it's back to normal oh yeah i think i'm gonna be here for the rest of the night oh my it's massaging my butt it's massaging my butt it feels inappropriate but it's okay <laughs> yeah we're gonna be here tonight and uh i'll see you in the morning good morning we are now up headed back to the residence for free breakfast i should say it's not free it's included We've obviously already paid for it with our room. And this is one of the most incredible breakfast buffets I have ever seen. They have a London Eye Ferris wheel full of pastries, an entire hot dim sum section with service from a chef, and of course, a meat area serving prime rib for breakfast. Okay, now back from breakfast, and we look down on these pools, so let's go down and pick a pool to hang out in. There's so many, there's so many. One, two, three, four, five, six. Huh, they look bigger from up in our room. <laughs> I'm glad you appreciate my jokes. Now, of course, the weather in London is not warm enough for a pool, but here in Macau, it's hot. And even when it's not necessarily sunny, like today. But the incredible part is this view of Big Ben. This, the weather, isn't very London. That, that helps a lot. It's, it's pretty neat to be in a pool and look up at see Big Ben. It's done very well. It's very ornate. It's very realistic. You just don't expect to see it from a pool. Here it goes. The clock face is a digital screen that comes alive on the hour, every hour. I mean, pretty neat. I like it. Okay, but there's a lot more around the hotel that is an identical replica of London. Let's go explore. Let me show you around. Let's go see. Now I'm gonna show you some of the details around the Londoner Hotel here. It was actually only rebranded as the Londoner back in 2021, but officially kind of launched mid 2023. So it's only really a year old. And as you can see, the entire front facade is decorated as the Houses of Parliament. But maybe the most obvious part that makes this London is what's kind of commonly known as Big Ben. But that behind me is the Elizabeth Tower, named after Queen Elizabeth II. The name Big Ben is actually the name of the biggest bell inside the clock tower. Which of course this replica does not have as it is digital. So fun fact you're learning here in Macau. And underneath the Elizabeth Tower are the famous British beef eaters, the guards out front. And I'm glad it's a statue. It's very, very lifelike. Oh, it's hot. Don't touch it. It is so hot and humid out here. I don't think I don't think you'd last in that uniform very long. So I'm glad you're a statue. Let me show you the rest. As you get closer to the front of the building, you'll see the Landseer lions. These are actually not full size. They're at one quarter size of the famous originals, which you'd see in London's Trafalgar Square. It really feels like all the details of this building all around the grounds have been thought of. These are the lamp posts all the way around and they even have Queen Elizabeth II markings on them. There has to be a telephone booth. And also Nelson's Column, which you'd find in Trafalgar Square. And of course there had to be a famous red double-decker bus. This is an original 1966 Route Master. I gotta say it looks great. And with this background, it, it looks at home, especially with the vintage livery. Now the question we all want to know is, can you go inside? Well, you can go up to this platform, but there is glass blocking us from going inside. But it looks like it still has the original upholstery. This has been a popular photo spot for people. Now this is a statue you wouldn't normally notice in London because it's normally hidden in the Rose Garden in Hyde Park. The statue is Diana, the goddess of hunting. So they've even got some little ones tucked away. Okay, if we were in London, I would be wet because it's raining, but look at my back. It is absolutely soaking with sweat. That's how hot and humid it is here. So with that, 
Let me show you inside where there's some air conditioning. Wow. That is the most ornate gold vehicle I've ever seen in my life. For a carriage, it is ginormous and gorgeous. The carriage was built for Queen Elizabeth II's 80th birthday, and it was used for the coronation of King Charles III as well. And now it sits here in Macau, and you can sit inside it, but there's a bit of a lineup, so we're gonna pass, and I'll just keep showing you around. Don't get distracted by the shopping. Look around and notice some of the details. They've hidden placards with names and details about prominent British people. And while they've done their best to maintain the history and heritage, it is Macau, and they have added a little flair at times too. You might recognize this address. This is 10 Downing Street. It's the Prime Minister's residence. Morning, Winston. And uh, you also might notice a little Easter egg that there is the cat in the window. If you know, you know. But we're not outside. This is, this is all inside. There's just little Easter eggs hidden all over this place. And just like walking the streets in real London, you never know who you're gonna run into. Look at that. Good day to you. That's real royalty. But enough exploring, it's time to get ready for this evening. All right, let's try this. Yes, hi, uh, wondering if I can, uh, I have a, how do I say this? I have a, a pillow menu. I'd like to order some pillows for our room tonight, please. Uh, we would like one neck contour pillow and one memory pillow so I can remember this trip forever. No, that's all, thank you very much. Thank you, bye-bye. He didn't laugh at my joke, but uh, they, they said they'd be here in 10 minutes. Wait, yes, yes, go ahead, go ahead. They have arrived. Perfect. That's the contour, yes, okay, and that's the memory, perfect. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's do dinner. Okay. I want to say there are a number of restaurants in this hotel, and one of them is actually a two Michelin star restaurant, but this is gonna be very revealing. I'm not much of a foodie, and the Michelin star thing really didn't appeal to me. And so instead, we well, are what's going- What's the example that the Michelin star restaurant had? I didn't even look at it. Oh, I just, you're I know, that certain. Yeah, I, knew, I know it's a fantastic rating of restaurants, but I was like, I'd rather go to the celebrity chef restaurant. Yeah, what did you have for lunch? I, I, I didn't show you, but I had a hot dog. Yeah, <laughs> so, how was it? Ah, it was mediocre. Why? What was wrong with it? It was a very like hard, medium warm, hard dog. Oh, you how know? was the bun though? How was the bun to dog ratio? Bun was fine. I don't think people want to hear about this. They want to hear about the celebrity chef we're going to go. No, they want to get to know you, baby, and oh. your preferences. Now, how about a show? And if you can, get outside at 7.30 at night to watch the light show on the front, on the facade of the Houses of Parliament. All right, I'm hungry. I mean, there's no one more famous, no chef anyways, in London than Gordon Ramsay. Tonight's menu is a three course set menu. All right, dinner set menu. Mm. I will tell you that butter was definitely bad. I just <laughs> caught my wife dipping her finger in the butter. No, Gordon. It was a mouse. Ah, this is just mine. Gordon, your butter is so good. She's not using cutlery. <laughs> Yeah, rip it apart. Ooh. Great job on the this bread is, there, Gordon, to start. So this is for you. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> Thank you. Wow, look at your foie gras. Foie gras. Oh, yes. All right, bon appétit. Bon appétit. Thanks, Gord. Mr. Ramsey. Chef Ramsey. Chef. Thanks, Chef. This is a huge salad. <laughs> I mean, look, internet, I'm so healthy. Um, yum. Um, good boy. <laughs> oh, I'm good for that. <laughs> oh, that looks good, Nicole. Good choice. Oh, yes. For the main, Nicole got the steak while I'm trying something for the very first time. Wow. At the Londoner, to be as London as possible, I got the beef Wellington. Looks great. Gord, you did well. Let's give it a try. <laughs> Touching it like you're some kind of chef. Oh, let me let me see let me see yeah. if it's crispy. <laughs> oh, it's a good sound. It's a good sound. Mmm. I like it already. A delicious first bite. Mr. Ramsey, Chef Ramsey, Chef? No, he's not here, right? You did well. You're in the back slaving away, and you <laughs> delivered me 
a happy place. And for dessert, a British specialty. Wow, this pudding is really sticky. <laughs> we are that couple. <laughs> We've ended up on the same side of the table. Yeah, we're so cute. Gotta say, Gordy, that was pretty good. Although, uh, we're not last, but there's not a lot of people left. We lasted. Tonight was a fun evening, and before bed, Nicole wants a cup of tea. This isn't Disneyland, they don't spin. Yeah, they do if you have enough wine. <laughs> Nicole, everybody. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, we all did improv. <laughs> we made some fun memories today, but I'm ready for my memory pillow. Okay. We are checking out, but I have to show you this. They have come to collect us, but they, we are headed to another hotel across the street called the Parisian. I told you earlier, we're going, we're going to Paris, but they called ahead, got us early check-in over there and then said we could wait until the Parisian called that our room was ready. And now they're taking us over in the limousine. The service here has been amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> and just like when we checked in, there's no need for us to stop at the reception desk in the lobby as we check out, as they already did that with us in our room when they came to get our bags. So we're just whisked straight through the lobby to a limousine van waiting for us out front. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Wow, this is a minivan. Now we really are not going far. In fact, I can see where we're going right there. That is the Eiffel Tower, baby. There it is. Our hotel, the Parisian, this is going to be the closest thing you can get to Paris in Asia. Bonjour. Wow, we just pull in right underneath the Eiffel Tower. All right. Thank you Thanks so much. so much for the ride. We're at the Parisian. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow. Now I should mention that the Parisian is also owned by the same company as the Londoner, so the service is very similar, guiding us straight to our room to check in in privacy. Oh, wow, there's not many rooms left here. Ah, this is the room. Yes, the room. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Wow. We have a corner suite, so two windows. One with a view of the Eiffel Tower and the Aqua Park below. And out this side, we have a view of the like main pools and the Moulin Rouge. And we can see London across the street, AKA the Londoner Hotel. Wow. What? Really? Oh my gosh, look at this shower. And what do you have a view of? Oh, the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower from our shower. Oh my gosh, what's in here? The toilet. Jesus. Is that Huge toilet room. I know. <laughs> Bathtub looks great. The main lobby of the Parisian hotel is white, while off to the sides, the reception areas are red and blue. Now these side rooms feel like the foyer in King Louis IV's castle, probably. Together, they're in the order of the French flag. Blue on the left, white in the center, and red on the right. And this whole lobby feels like the most overwhelming combination of French style, art, architecture, and grandeur, which yes, is a French word. Lovely. Merci. Similar to the Londoner, the Parisian comes with pools. However, these ones are designed like the Versailles Gardens with views of the Eiffel Tower and of course, a red windmill, replicating that of the Moulin Rouge. If we turn around, the hotel itself is inspired by French architecture with ornate trim commonly seen in Paris. I mean, I guess, other than the fact that we're sitting in a pool under the Eiffel Tower, yeah, it feels like we could be in France. Now I showed you the Londoner light show when we were at that hotel. It's time for the Eiffel Tower light show. The Eiffel Tower out front of the Parisian is a 50% scale replica of the original French version. Okay, we've come outside. Right, we've come outside across the street from the Eiffel Tower into the park, so during the light show, we'll have the best view, I think. It feels like I'm walking in the park in Paris. This is wonderful. Look at this. Look at this, yes? Oui, oui. Look at this. There's no one else here. We'll be right up against the fence. 
as the show starts. I mean, this is pretty cool. It's a nice warm evening and I have the whole park to myself, standing under a half-sized replica of the Eiffel Tower. I don't really know what to say other than it's something. Speaking of the Eiffel Tower, it's time for our fancy dinner. Now tonight's dinner is special. I booked us at the only restaurant you want to eat at when you're staying at this hotel. Mm. Mm. But there was a catch. You have to wear long pants. So I went to Lululemon and I bought long pants and a long sleeve shirt as well. So full Lulu for dinner. Oh, it looks good. It's called La Chine. Wow. I don't normally eat at restaurants with a dress code. So but I'm excited for this one. Hi. We are leaving the hotel and going towards the Eiffel Tower. This is the main floor of the Eiffel Tower. And we are eating amongst the steel beams that support the Eiffel Tower. Thank you. Oh, we get to, we get to sit next to each other. We love that. We do love that. I really like this look. I mean, who knew an industrial design could feel so romantic? Pillars in. My drink is called the Tower of Love. We are so in love. Because we are in the Tower of Love. Because we are so in love. We, we, really like we are in love. Oh, we have to say it in French. Santé. Santé, mon oui. chum, mon belle. Bonne soirée, hein? Tu es très Mais beau. oui, mais oui. That's it. I'll tell you. Ready? Yeah. Welcome. That's cool. It's coming up. Wow. They wrote that on the plate for us. Very fun. Um, now, do you know why there's two sets? Oh, no. Wait. I didn't even notice. Yeah. Why? Well, my understanding is that for like dim sum, one is for serving yourself and one is for actually eating. Ah. Yeah, but I don't actually know which is, whether it matters, like which is which, like white or black. So what if I just use one of each? You <laughs> did mix it up? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think anyone would fine you, but. Okay, all right, well, cool. You learn something every day. We are going to race to pick up a particularly challenging dessert with our chopsticks. Given our chopstick skills, I'm sure for somebody else this would be easy peasy. Oh, uh, these are uh, a slippery item. Okay, ready? Yeah. Set, go. No! Hey. But you didn't want to put it down because you didn't want to pick it up again. I don't know how both ate it. What is it? I don't know. You win. Oh gosh. Well, oh, it's all coming apart. I got it, I got it. You know what, baby? Mmm. <laughs> oh. That exploded from the inside. That's nice. Thank you for taking care of that for me. Get yourself a Nicole if you can. What do you think? Are they real? <laughs> Definitely real. Could be. So it's off to bed as tomorrow we head to Venice and Portugal. This morning, we're heading down to the town square in the Parisian, which has a surprisingly lively sky. Bonjour. It's a little plaza in the middle of the mall with uh, our boulangerie right here. So we grabbed ourselves a croissant and a petit café. <laughs> another day, another cheers, a drink on camera. And decided which country we want to head to next. We are now leaving the Parisian. This is like our border crossing heading to Italy. We're going to the Venetian to see Venice. Italy becomes Mario. <laughs> Mario! <laughs> it smells like a canal. Just like Vegas. No, just like Italy. Sorry, Venice, Venice. 
Now Venice, the actual city, doesn't just have one canal. It's a network of canals, which is kind of replicated here as well, with three separate canals. It feels a little like Disneyland, like when you're in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Okay. saying that about everywhere we go. Literally every trip. I would say one of the key differences here is that instead of the canal being surrounded by coffee shops and restaurants, it's all luxury stores all over the place. That has a very different feeling than actual Venice. I'm just so impressed at how clean the water is in the canals here in Italy. But it wouldn't be Venice without a piazza. And this is St. Mark's Square. It's a 24-hour clock. Oh, cool. I don't know if I've ever seen one before. Now, the Venetian Macau Hotel here isn't just a gimmick of canals. It's actually the largest casino wow. in the world. These are obviously wallpapers, not hand-painted like the originals. But... Oh, I don't know. Give them, give them some credit. Oh, it's still impressive. It's still fun. Someone had to wallpaper that up there. It is also the largest single structure hotel in Asia, which is impressive. But Nicole and I are here for a real European experience. Okay, all of this so far has been replica cities of European and British cities. But if you want a real, a real European experience, you can also get that in Macau. And so we're leaving the property for the first time to go get that. So, we are now in central Macau, which is a special administrative region of China, but it was leased to the Portuguese in 1557, and they made it basically a de facto colony. It's now obviously been transferred back, but there is still a lot of Portuguese history here. I think he was the first European to reach Asia by boat. Well, I immediately noticed the Portuguese influence in the architecture. Look at this square. We just got here. This feels like Europe. This feels like Asia. Yeah, it's like almost a perfect melange. Yeah, cobbled streets. Yeah. I it's more of cobbled streets. And these are the St. Paul ruins. This is just such an interesting spot with such strong contrast from literal ruins, an old city, and modern towers in the background. Wow. Right above it is a Portuguese fort at the top of the hill. The Monte do Forte was the military center of Macau. So because Portugal was only leasing the land when they built the fort, they didn't aim any cannons towards mainland China. But this did actually hold off an invasion from the Dutch. And surprisingly, it was only demilitarized in 1976. It was a lot more recent than I thought it would have been. And it's now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And so with our fun getaway to Macau, Surprisingly, I learned more about European history than I expected to. As usual, I don't know where I'm going next, but I know I want you there with me. So make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next week. Topics these days can be so divisive, which is why it's so important when you're reading the news to know which perspective you're getting. So I'd like to thank the sponsor of this portion of the video, Ground News, because they've made a website and an app designed to help pull back the curtain on media bias. Ground News also avoids algorithms, so you can get a more honest representation of the news in the world. Every story comes with a quick visual breakdown of the political bias, factuality, and ownership of the sources reporting, all backed by ratings from three independent news monitoring organizations. Okay, here's an example. It's a story about a real European city, Pompeii, that is fighting over tourism. And we can see on the right-hand side that there are 59 sources reporting on this, with over half of them leaning right. Below that, we can see the bias distribution listing the news agencies. I can also compare the headlines and read every article without leaving the app. Another feature I like is called Blindspot, which shows you news articles that are being underreported by one side of the political spectrum. So you don't get stuck in your own echo chamber and you can have a broader view on the news. Ground News gives you the tools you need to be a critical thinker and they're giving us 50% off a Vantage subscription if you use the code DOWNYLIVE. Ground.news slash Downey Live. And you'll be supporting an independent media platform that is looking to transform the media landscape and make it more transparent. Thanks, Ground News.